You are the one who says that God and you are comparable. God is gifted. That's what you said. You are confused. And you are confusing those who are following you yes. to believe that it's a revelation. It's not. If God cannot be gifted, then God is not less gifted. He is not qualified to be described as gifted. Therefore, I cannot be more gifted than God. Yes. Because in the category of the gifted, God does not fit. Yes. This is a simple logic. So the problem with going to school when you are too old, some of these things you don't get them yes. in adult school class. I'm not yes. condescending towards adult school. Yes. We also do adult school, but I can tell you there are certain rationales of logic and thinking and processing things that you learn when you go to school at the right time and commit to your education at the right time. Yes. So you don't end up claiming to be wise when you are not. You don't end up claiming to be complicated when you are not. You don't end up claiming to be intellectually superior when you are intellectually in the ICU. Isaiah 40 verse 25, what does it say? To whom then will you liken me? To whom will you compare me? Or shall I be equal? Tinganzane, said the Holy One. Read it again. To whom then will you liken me? Yanunga fananiz waneni. Or shall I be equal? Pani wandaka and zananai, said the Holy One. This was not our one. <laughs> <laughs> this is scripture, Mr. Makandiwa. Does not allow you to compare yourself with God. Also, I like verse 18. Yes, you want to read verse 18 again? To whom then will you liken God? Yes. Or what likeness will you compare unto him? Aha. Uh -huh. Let us look at Isaiah 45, verse number 5 to 7. I am the Lord. You are the Lord. And there is none else. There is none else. There is no God beside me. There is no God beside me. I guided thee. I created you. Though thou hast not known even me. Even though you don't know me. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. There is no one like God. I am the Lord and there is none else. So this, these scriptures are enough. Yes to discourage you from trying to con construct a comparison yes. between you and God. So, Mr. Magandiwa, my final words to him are in Job 42, verse 1 to 3. What is the verdict yes. to what Mr. Magandiwa is saying? Eventually, this is what Job said about himself. Yes. Yes. Then Job answered the Lord and said, What did Job say? I know that thou canst do everything. I know that you can do everything. And that no thought can be withholden from thee. There is no one who can stop your mind from imagining or planning anything. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? That's what God asked Job. Therefore, if I uttered that I understood not. I want us to highlight verse, verse 3b. Therefore, if I uttered that which I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, things. which I knew, I knew not. <laughs> <laughs> I like the whole part, verse 3b. Therefore, I have uttered that which I understood not. <laughs> things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think God Job made this concession. Yes. He said, Well, I didn't know that I spoke nonsense. Yes. This is rubbish. <laughs> Everything that I said, God. <laughs> I don't understand it. Yes. Disregard everything that, that I, I said. said. It's yes. it's it it doesn't deserve your attention. Yes. Things were too wonderful for me. Yes. And I knew nothing. Yes. This is what Mr. Makandiwa did. Mr. Makandiwa uttered something he understood not. Yes. Things were too wonderful for him. Mm. He knew nothing. Yes. 
The advice we have to him mm. is that he should repent. Yes. But we want to go without showing you that we have listened to this man for a long time. Yeah. He is a full-blown heretic. Yes. He's an heretic of not. Let's listen to his video before we go. And we will show you again that this message is not coming from someone who has the Holy Spirit in him, who fears and trembles at the word of God. He is not in the ministry to save God. He is in the ministry to save his own hunger. Munane nzara, munano chagamari, ajishandi sabaybe. Saka kana usina mngari mauri, auna machikira, unota ura chero shwa wafunga. Because chinangwa chako, deche kudaku shamisavano, kutunzi uri mkuru, uneja uno ziva shwa wakaona, jisinga zikanu inevamwe. Nopezi sila na mngari wacho cha hii, asisina kukuzi wako anofanyi wako wanako. Yes. Iwe nduwa wakukuzi wako darika mngari wacho wawono tu wakatunga nae. Kushikira wako kutozo wona, uine zimwe zunuza, ucha gona kuita, jisinga gone kwe na mngari. Ingozi ilimumusha ya tii na yoi. Let's watch his video again, and you will see that this man is an heretic of not. When Adam was brought down in the, in the book of Genesis, he was then placed in a physical body for him to be effective and to be tangible and to be relevant to his surroundings that were also physical. So now Adam, he is in the physical body he left heaven before he sinned. He left heaven before he sinned. So you don't talk to me about uh, Jesus came that men might go back to heaven. Jesus did not die that we may go to heaven. That is not the reason why he died. He did not die so that we may go back to heaven. Remember, he came because there was a consequence that man could no longer bear, which was caused by sin. And when man sinned, what he lost was not heaven. When man sinned, what he lost was not heaven. Because he left heaven before he sinned. So Jesus cannot come to reverse sin so that man can find his way back to heaven. Man did not leave heaven because of sin. He left heaven before he sinned. So Adam never lost heaven because of sin. What he lost because of sin was the garden which was in Eden. And Eden means pleasure. So sin made the man to lose pleasure, not heaven, pleasure on earth. And when man had lost pleasure on earth, that's why Jesus had to come and get rid of sin so that pleasure can be recovered again on earth on earth, on earth. So please understand this. Understand why Jesus died. He didn't die so that man can then find his way back to heaven. No, 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 no. Adam was never chased from heaven when he sinned. He was chased from the garden. So sin, the effects of sin. I will tell you one thing today that is going to surprise you, that is going to shock you. Look at this. How do we know that men sinned? Tell me, what happened immediately when men sinned? When sin was committed for the very first time, what happened to men? That shows that now man has committed sin. Tell me the thing that happened immediately. 
Read your Bible carefully. What really happened there and there is proof that man has committed sin. He did not fall from heaven. No. When man sinned, the first sign, that sin uses to introduce itself. The arrival of sin was portrayed by nakedness. And the man's removal from pleasure. When Adam sinned, proof that he sinned was the realization of something that he didn't have. Lack. Lack. Let me put it in ways that you understand. Poverty. So poverty is the thing that foreruns sin. When sin is committed, the presence of sin is not the sin. You, you don't see the sin that was committed. It is the effects of sin. The number one sign that sin has arrived is poverty. Poverty. So we have a new scripture in the Bible. Mr. Makandiwa has edited John chapter 3, verse number 16. It now reads as follows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should find, should not languish in poverty, but finds uh, pleasure. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not languish in poverty, but have pleasure. That's Makandiwa's theology. Jesus came to bring pleasure to men and not eternal life. The man you were watching on the screen, he spits on the face and the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ each and every day. He stands on the pulpit. Tell me, believers, even those who don't like us, Tell me that you believe that this is what Jesus died for. Jesus died to give you pleasure. Wow. So when we say you are a false prophet, we are not really describing a mistake you committed while you are preaching. Maybe you quoted the scripture wrongly or what. Those are natural mistakes which every preacher will commit. We look at the, 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 the foundation of your doctrine. What do you preach? Makandiwa preaches a gospel of prosperity. Make money in Jesus' name. This is what he was preaching now. The dangers in this heresy is that it mocks the cross of Christ. That's why Philippians chapter 3 verse 16 call these preachers enemies of the cross of Christ. Nevertheless, where to have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have asked for it in Zambo. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. What do they do? Whose end is destruction? Yes. Whose God is their belly? Their God is their stomach. When they drive a beautiful car, God is great. Yes. When they marry a beautiful woman, it is God's grace. Yes. I am blessed. When they have pleasure. When they enjoy <laughs> pleasure. They say this is why Jesus came. Their God is their belly, yes. 
and whose glory is in their shame. Yes. Who mind earthly things. They mind earthly things. Yes. yes. For our conversation is in heaven. Let's end there. The whole clip is heretic. Yes. Adam was never in heaven. He said Adam did not leave heaven because of sin. Mm. That's not true. Adam mm. was never in heaven. Mm. Adam was created here on earth. Yes. Going to heaven is not returning to heaven. It's going to heaven for the first time. Mm. Just like the children of Israel who came to Canaan from Egypt, they were not returning. They were born in Egypt, just like the Israelites who left Babylon to go back to Israel. They were not born in Israel. They were born in Babylon. They were going to Israel for the first time. It's not true that Adam came from heaven and he was put into the garden. Yes. Such a scripture does not exist. Actually, Genesis says God created the earth, and from the earth God made the man. God had to create the earth first before God created the man. But it happened here on earth, not in heaven. It's not true. Yes. And the fact that Adam was naked was not caused by the sin that they committed in the garden. Before, before, before they committed a <laughs> sin in Genesis chapter 3, the scripture in Genesis 2.25 says they were both naked and they were not ashamed. Yes. Nakedness, yes. which Makandiwa translated to mean poverty, was not caused by sin. Yes. They were naked before they sinned. Yes. The whole message yes. is heretic. Now, to imagine such that such an heretic is boasting <laughs> that he went to Bible college for three years. He is in love with the scriptures. He studies the scriptures. Which is scriptures now? So, Makandiwa, you don't know that the nakedness of Adam was not caused by sin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is it not a miracle now? It is. It is a miracle now. So, this, this was just a video to show you that we are not hating this man. We have no qualms with him. He is a false preacher. He is an heretic. He is a blasphemer. These are great swelling words. Jesus came to restore pleasure. Which pleasure did Adam have in the garden? Adam did not lose the garden. Because Adam was never given the garden. The garden was never given to Adam as a property. God recruited Adam as an employee. Yes. So if you are fired from your job, you can't walk around saying, I lost my company. Yes. You were an employee. Yes. In Genesis 2, verse 15, God employed Adam to keep his own garden. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So... Was, 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 did, did God give Adam the garden? No. It was so how can you say when God kicked him out, Adam lost the garden? <laughs> Adam was a tenant of God. Yes. He never lost the garden. He never owned it in the first place. Jesus, our Lord, did not die to restore pleasure. It's a heresy. Great heresy from the devil's mouth. So, our advice to him is to go and read Job 42, verse 3, verse 3 B. Job said, Therefore, if I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me, <laughs> which I knew not. Yes. This is what happened. But we want to also say, if Mr. Makandiwa is a revelation to this matter, we can also meet. We are still available. Yes. We are still available. Believers, followers, and fans, sympathizers, critics, and haters, 
We thank you for watching our video. Yes. Mr. Makandiwa has no revelation. Mr. Makandiwa has an heretic claim. The claim is God is gifted. He is the one who made that claim. He must repent. He must repent. It's not allowed for a man to compare himself with God. We established it in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 25. I want to advise believers to read Isaiah chapter 40 from verse number 25 up to the end. You will learn a lot of things which Mr. Makandiwa could have learned. Was he indeed truly a man who desires to learn? I am not here to prove that I understand the word better than Makandiwa. That's not why I am doing this. I am doing this so that people may learn the truth. I believe that among his followers, there are people who truly believe that he is a man of God. We do this to show you that he is not. A man who was sent by God, he ministers with fear and trembling. Yes. You must honor God. You must watch your mouth. Don't say anything that despises God. Don't say anything that profanes the name of God. Don't say anything that denounces the authority of God. Don't say anything that belittles the glory, the power, the efficacy, the magnificence that God has. Exodus 20 says, Thou shalt not mention the name of the Lord thy God in vain. This is what Mr. Makandua does habitually, systematically, relentlessly. That is a sign that inside his heart, there is nothing of God planted in him. Those who know God don't say anything that comes into their minds about God. You hesitate. You breathe to your mouth. If God is your master, where is the honor that a servant must render to his master? It's very regrettable, but we hope one day, those who are deceived, God will touch their hearts to believe the word of truth that glorifies God. John spoke in, in, in John chapter 3, verse number 29, 30, and 31. He said, may Jesus increase and may I decrease. What causes you to put God on a scale to measure how much God weighs if you are a spirit-filled servant of God, child of God. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5, it says, when you come to the house of God, let's read verse number 2, when you come to the house of God, do not be rash with your mouth. Let not your heart be quick to utter anything before God. Read it. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Why? For God is in heaven. God is in heaven. And thou upon earth. You are on earth. Therefore let thy words be few. Even your words towards God should be few. Yes. Don't be too quick to open your mouth and speak any words towards God. Yes. Honor God with your mouth. Yes. Walk away from men who start to belittle God and start to honor themselves in the name of revelation. You are going to hell if you continue to follow this man. A message that does not honor God is not correct. A message that misrepresents the purpose of Christ. What did Christ die for? According to 1 Corinthians 15 verse number 3, for first of all, I have delivered unto that which I received, that Christ Jesus died for our sins, according to scriptures. That's the message. Christ died for our sins, so that we may receive forgiveness of sins, adoption into sons, a relationship with God, 
by which we shall fellowship with him eternally. That is the purpose of Christ. If a man comes to say, no, the purpose was not forgiveness of sins, adoption of sons, eternal life. Actually, the purpose is a pleasure. Those are great words. Don't belittle to the suffering of Christ. You are going to pay in the last day. Our message to Mr. Makandiwa is to come back to God. This is getting worse. For how long shall this lunacy continue to haunt you? Come so that you may learn the true gospel. Great speeches are not great sermons. Don't confuse the two. 